Hello, everyone, and welcome yet again to another episode of Unveiling Beauty. My name is Ammon Carver, and I am thrilled to be joined by none other than Miss Sonia Dove as my co-host today. Sonia, how are you? I'm brilliant and super excited, Ammon. This is my first time. Happy New Year to you. I actually wanted to start off the show before we get into it. I wanted to share, I had an experience for New Year's that just made me think of you and it was incredible. It was different than any other New Year's I've ever had. I went out and spent the evening on New Year's Eve in Joshua Tree. Um, and we went and took blankets and got on top of like a rock that overlooked the valley and just snuggled up and watched the sunset and then laid up and watched the stars up and like until the actual New Year's time passed. And it was so different. It wasn't about like celebrating or pushing back a year that had gone past. It was just like openness and oneness and not to be so cheesy, but it just felt so like serene and so beautiful. And I know that that's something that's near and dear to your heart with being like in nature like that. So I wanted to share that with you. Oh, that's so beautiful. And you know what? At the end of the day, connectivity with earth and nature, there's nothing like it. Oh my God, I wish I was there. I didn't get the invite. <laughs> Next year we'll do it. Next year we'll do it. So today, our episode, I'm so excited. Today our episode is about um, influential industry icons, but it's going to be the powerhouse women edition. Um, and so Sonia, you're not only the co-host, but you are selected today because you represent one of those iconic women in the industry. And I'm really excited because I think right now it's more important than ever to celebrate um, women in the industry that are powerful and that are setting the tone and setting the representation for you know inspiring women who want to keep growing and that's what today is going to be all about and i cannot wait to get started but before we do i want to remind you guys that unveiling beauty airs every monday night and then on tuesday night so tomorrow night we will be on sonia's instagram where we will be going live where you guys can ask us live questions interact a little bit more we'll recap what we talk talk about today and then there will be a little giveaway. Sonia, talk to us about what that giveaway could be. Yes, Ammon. The person who engages the most has the chance of winning some incredible, incredible Weller products. So don't be shy, any of you. You know what? Post, post, tell us because you could be the next winner. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, let's get right into it, okay? Because I have a feeling the guest that we have coming on today is just going to set this one for one of the one of the episodes that we are not going to soon forget because I adore this woman and I know you do probably even more than I do if it's possible. I want to bring on industry icon and educator Miss Candy Shaw. Candy, how are Hello. you? Hello. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. I want to do some virtual hugging to both of you. I miss you so much. My road warriors that are out there, and here we are recreating ourselves. And I'm so happy to be here, and it's an honor. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being on top of it, being on being on the show with us. And and I'm going to switch it from co-host. Sonia, you only get to be co-host for a second. Now I'm going to switch you over, and I want to interview and talk to the two of you together because uh, you represent something very powerful in my eyes and in the industry's eyes. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who would be very curious to know um, how you've maintained such a level of prestige throughout your career and even how you got started. So let's start from the beginning, wherever you think that beginning is. But what it is, what is it that got you started in the industry in the first place? Candy, why don't you start? Well, just to tell your viewers, my father was a 60 year hairdresser, a competition hairdresser. So it was in my veins and my blood. Um, and obviously watching him my whole life, my mother was a makeup artist. They worked as a dynamic duo uh, when they did competition works together. And, you know, I just always knew I wanted to be a hairdresser, but really what I did that was kind of interesting is I was dyslexic. So I used to cut hair in the locker room in the seventh grade and oh. trade for math homework. 
And so I became an entrepreneur very early on so that I could figure out a way to graduate high school and get through school. So hairdressing was my catalyst to get myself out of school. And I never went to college. I never went to beauty school because you don't have to in Georgia. And I learned through apprenticeship. And that's how I got my start. Oh, fascinating. I have <laughs> never heard a story like that one before. What about you, Sonia? What got you started? Yeah. I have to say, first of all, wow, Candy. And as long as I've known you, I didn't know that exact beginning for your career because how interesting that I left school as a dropout. I had nothing um, to do and someone asked me, what is it you want to do? And I said, I want to work with people. I didn't know what career that would be with. And someone suggests, why don't you do hair? I was like, I'm not sure about touching people's hair. <laughs> but I enrolled into beauty school and after one day, I felt that passion in my heart to carry on because I made fe people feel beautiful and I knew that was my connectivity. So for me, it was people. And I love competition work, Candy. I'm surprised we've got very similar beginnings. We really do. No, that's fantastic. Yes. And yeah, we'll but, have to set up a little like competition work between the two of you, like later, <laughs> like it later on. We'll set something up. <laughs> Isn't that great? Um, about. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yeah, it's it's great, and it's so interesting to hear how everybody gets started because I think everybody has an individual journey and individual reason, um, but it always becomes personal. It always becomes attached to the people and the relationships, and I, I can see that very very strongly with both of you, uh, Candy for you you are known in the industry as the bali lama so for those uh people who are non-hairdresser non-industry people um i would love for you to explain where that nickname come, came from and uh, a little bit about how you became to be how you came to be known as the bali lama well, actually, I became the Bali Lama through the name of a student. A student actually called me that one day in class because I was teaching how to balayage hair. And they said, you're, you're like the Dalai Lama, but really it's the Bali Lama. And it just kind of stuck. And um, that was right in the influx of social media. And I was trying to figure out like, what is my handle gonna be? And so uh, I actually uh, decided that that the Bali Lama was kind of a cute name and I stuck with it. Now I have a whole llama farm, if you will, because everybody <laughs> sends me every llama that they see, uh, you know, in the store, they always send it to me. But it's, it's actually very endearing. Yeah, and so for those viewers, so the Bali Lama, like obviously the Dalai Lama, but Bali Lama, I think obviously has a reference to balayage, right? Is that, and then is that something that you tend to specialize in or that you really like? Yeah. Of course, you're right. I didn't really explain that part, but <laughs> I've been doing that for quite some time. Um, I was doing balayage over 25 years now and um, I, t I sort of Americanized it, if you will, because obviously it started in Europe and I just Americanized it, came out with a product for it and, um, you know, created a curriculum in the classroom for students and hairdressers to learn and really how to do some unique looks that were very, very different and trending at the time. And that was really important to me to uh, sort of carry my industry into understanding the importance of, of change and the importance of how we were foiling hair and then going into actually painting hair. So it was, a, it was a wonderful transition. And this industry has gone through a major transition in hair color recently uh, for the past, I would say, five or six years. I agree, I agree. And, and what perfect timing for you to get in early on that, that balayage trend and really be able to develop your own approach, even your own terminology, like you said, so that people yeah. can identify what you do and how you do it and how it differentiates from the next artist, which I know is, is a key to the success of, you know, when you wanna be an artist that's successful, what is your point of difference? And it shows very clearly that you got on a trend early and you, 
you know, made it your own and then you pushed it out there and a lot of people follow what you do and, and use you as an example or the, the trendsetter when it comes to that, that technique. So that's amazing. Well, Congratulations. It is quite endearing, but I uh, also know that I'm only as last person I taught. So I spend a lot of time on my craft. I still work behind the chair, which a lot of folks don't know about me, which I really take very, very seriously in, in what I do. And I just love giving back. Like Sonia said, you know, when you're giving beauty or you're, you're creating beauty every day and you're, and you're making someone feel beautiful and their ultimate goal is to be beautiful, there's really nothing more rewarding. Hey Amen. Well said. I mean, I don't even know how to respond to that other than like, uh, yes, I agree a hundred percent. Um, Sonia, for you, I want to know, I know you well now, you know, we've, be, we've gotten quite close over the years, but I would like for you to like talk to us a little bit about um, how you got to where you are as an educator, the educator, Sonia, that you are, um, and, and how that led you to be affiliated with Ulta Beauty. Yes, so um, that's an interesting question, actually, Amon, because I am my own worst enemy. So I feel I got to the place I am in, in the industry, not because of myself, but because of the people that surround me. I've been very fortunate to have incredible people that have really pushed me, pushed me because they can see that I have it in me, whereas I didn't see it myself. Those people, Candy Shaw's one of them, <laughs> The Ultra Beauty Pro Team is another team of people. I love to work in the salon. I don't like to own my own salon. That thing I learned quickly. Uh, Christopher Dove and I did have a salon in Santa Monica, and I realized it pulled me from behind the chair so quickly into more of the admin. So I'm not the best salon owner, but the reason for me to work in Ulta Beauty, which I work in in Santa Monica, is I like to be surrounded by family. I call it family, but people look at it as team because I help them, but they actually help me. And education through my whole career, even though I've been an educator, people feel, oh gosh, she's teaching me. But actually, I learn more from others than they think I do. So yeah. sort of that filling the cup, and I know Candy agrees with that. Yeah. We've had many talks on that. And I, I can definitely relate to that feeling, you know, that uh, you, you give of yourself, but they don't realize that indeed you're the one that's that's receiving and that's being fulfilled. So I can definitely relate to that. And, and many parts of what you just said, Sonia, in terms of becoming your own worst enemy and surrounding yourself with people who believe in you sometimes more than you believe in yourself. Um, and I think that's a skill that you should give yourself credit for because we choose who we surround ourselves with. We choose um, to surround ourselves with people that we want to be like. You become friends with, with Candy Shaw, you know, and and you you surround, you are who you surround yourself with. And I think you've done a really great job of surrounding yourself with really great people and that's brought that greatness out in you. And you are an absolute inspiration. I have never left a class that Sonia Dove has taught that anybody has walked away feeling like, I mean, everybody's in tears or inspired or just want to meet you and they can't believe it. It's uh, it's an honor to have you on our pro team. And uh, I love hearing you speak with such humility with all of the accolades and all of the achievements that you've garnered over your career. But enough about you. Oh, la, 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 I... you love me, la, la, la. <laughs> no, 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 I, I have to say something and I'm feeling it. I'm not feeling it here. I'm feeling it here. When I'm looking at this um, screen and speaking to you both, you two, Ammon and Candy, I can't thank you enough. And I really mean it. I like you, you know, you know what? They're coming. Uh oh, they're coming. And I haven't even had my glass of red wine. But that's why surround yourself with people, people that love you. And we need this. We really all need this. Amen, sister. Amen. So speaking of people that love you, um, I would love to know, because you two are both mentors to many, to many, many, many people. Many people look up to, they follow you, they want to be like you. Um, who would you consider your mentor when you were going, when you were kind of like getting your feet wet in the industry? Do you have one? 
Uh, Candy, why don't you start? Well, you know, it's interesting. Obviously, my father was a great mentor. My uncle was also a hairdresser, um, you know, uh, but my mentors change. And that's one of the things that I'm learning about myself. You know, I think we all have one person that we go back to from our originator that was sort of our mentor that really got us our starts or really cared about us from the very beginning. But every year I seek a different mentor mentor that's going to coach me, whether they coach me through a book I read, whether they coach me through uh, a documentary or, or a podcast or something as wonderful as this show that you have, those change. And sometimes my mentors don't know they're my mentors. And that's really kind of an interesting thing. It's like I'm watching what folks are doing. One person who I watch all the time and love and has mentored and coached my life is Sonia, you know, and we've had that relationship. And even though we don't always talk through that, I still think she's probably the finest hair colorist I've ever met. And, you know, knowing that uh, I can pick up the phone and call her is, you know, incredible. And I think that if I was saying anything to your viewers out there, I would say that you know, change mentors, yes, every year, but always find that go-to relationship that you can come back to and let it be authentic, but be willing to also take that criticism of how you can be better and what you need to do better every year. And as we embark upon, upon a new year, and God knows we needed to get into 2021, um, I would say to everyone there, um, your mentors aren't always someone who is in the hair industry or in the beauty industry. It could be someone outside of that industry that really can uh, catapult you and, and carry you through um, good times and bad. I could agree more. Wow. Sonia? Wow, I'm glad you asked Candy first because as soon as I heard that question, I was like, oh gosh, I don't know how to answer that. But the way she answered it so eloquently that it changes is absolutely, because I was like, okay, I can't reel off 500 names, otherwise it's going to be way over the show. But um, it is true. It's um, it's like a relationship. You change as you grow. So Candy, you really started me thinking. I have to say, uh, when I first started my career, it was Trevor Sorby in the hairdressing world. I remember Trevor Sorby, seeing him on stage at Salon International in London, and I thought, wow, he really is a genius. He didn't say much on stage, he just worked. And what he created with his hands was just incredible. And he wasn't arrogant, he was very humble. That's in the hair world, but in the world of people, I have to say it, um, it's a strange one, it's Mother Teresa. And it's because she was so little, she said hardly anything, but she, when she left the world, she left with greatness. And everybody knew her, but she wasn't boasting about herself. She just moved like a swan in life. So that was when I first started. And I mean, it's true, it changes. I think how Candy said it, it's as you evolve, your mentors come in and out in your life. So. Well done, Candy. I'm glad Amon didn't ask me that question first. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, I and they, I, they can see that. I mean, the, the relationship between the two of you is just, it's so sweet. That's a guy. I was so excited to be able to put you both together on the show because I know that you have such a strong bond with each other. Candy, did you want to say something to, to no, Sonia? Sonia, to piggyback on that, you know, my father always said, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I think that's one of the things that you find in yourself is you, when you are ready, you seek what it is that you, the knowledge that you need. And whether that's through uh, something spiritual or whether it's through just something technical, uh, those, that's always kind of what comes to fruition for me is just in that moment, I seek it and I seek that mentor. That's amazing. I like, I want to write that quote down. Wow. Um, really beautifully said. Okay, so now, powerhouse women, women empowerment. I'm all about, you know, the, 
the the year of of the of the woman taking control and step over boys it's time for girls to run the world for a minute um Gladly. more than just a minute no i'm just i'm making light of uh i i'm very inspired by um women who really know how to to harness their power and really uh, use it for the greater good. But one of the things that I find that's really unique is, and that can be a challenge sometimes is women can choose. They can choose to be adversaries or they can choose to be friends. And I want you two to talk about how that developed between you two, because you've obviously chosen to be friends. And what is that like? Um, this one, I will have Sonia. Yes, well, uh, one thing in life, like a chat's like, and some. And when I first met Candy, she warmed my heart. She really did. And as she spoke with me, it was like me speaking to myself. So I feel personally that the only way we're going to succeed as women in this industry or women of the world is really embrace each other really form a community together because together as a group we can really be strong we can speak for each other we can validate each other we come from a place of love so you know there's i'm not one of these people that's oh she said this or she said this i would i just it's not even in my head and i know that Candy's like that. I've spent many times with Candy at her house, and believe me, I've cried on Candy's shoulders. She's seen me at my worst and she's seen me at my best, but together we've supported each other and it's all about support. It really is. You know, that's all I can really say. Well, you're so sweet to say that, but I have to tell you that everyone should know that I was so intimidated to meet you. Do you remember that? We were on the cruise together and I should have known that it wasn't going to be free because I went home with a parting gift. I got pregnant on a cruise and I already had a <laughs> And I should know that there is nothing free in the world, right? <laughs> uh, but Sonia was on this cruise and that's the only reason I went was to see her. She was the colorist on this cruise and I couldn't even approach her. I was so nervous. Uh, I had always admired her. I had always loved her from afar. She's a a little bit older than me but not by much so <laughs> I looked to her as like a big sister and I finally got the nerve to talk to her and we were instant friends and from that moment forward we have um, straightened each other's tiaras and that is really what it's all about I mean uh, Sonia is one of my dearest friends I call her my best friend in hairdressing what without question but I think that the thing that made her so approachable for me is just that she shares so openly with her heart and gives so unselfishly um, you know Sonia you always give with your hand down not your hand up you know a lot of people give with their hand up and expect something in return and I will say something about you, my friend. You've never given me anything and expected anything in return. So there's just something about a friend like that. You just, you know, you you just don't find those kinds of people in the world. This is the oh, biggest, oh. gooeyest love fest right now. I'm loving it. I, <laughs> Genuine. I, I want to bring this to a place where I, I want our viewers to understand, like, what we're talking about right now is an example that exists. It, this isn't just for the beauty industry, right? This isn't just for um, two women who are in the same career that have chosen to be friends instead of competing against each other. This transcends gender, even. This is about um, human kindness and doing the right thing for somebody, you know, selflessly and being that type of person that's giving and you two are both great examples of that. I love that you share that moment with each other and are good examples for our up and coming um, youngsters in the industry, whether they're male or female. Your stories and the way that you just connected, I tell all the time when I'm talking to, to students or people in the industry, the relationships that you make, they will last a lot longer than you actually believe. The people that you meet today 
at your first hair show. I still am friends with them and they are people that are part of my life um, and they grow deep inside of your heart and they share memories of your life that uh, I can tell the two of you have obviously um, been through and experienced that. So thank you for sharing that and for sharing that we have a choice. We have a choice to compete or we have a choice to unite. And right now, the message that I just want to kind of like wrap with that is that we are all stronger together. Stronger together as women, as men, um, as a group of hairdressing and beauty professionals. We're stronger together if we can link arms, be kind to one another, uplift one another. Social media should be a place where we encourage each other and not tear each other down. And I couldn't think of two better examples to have on our show today that represent exactly where you can be in your career if you live by those values. So with that, I want to thank you both, but especially you, Candy, um, for taking the time right away. I know you just finished like a client and jumped on our show right now. So thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your experiences and inspiring so many like you have through the years and, and specifically on our show tonight. Thank you for joining us. It is my absolute pleasure, and uh, I really love what you're doing, and everything you say is so true, Ammon. And, um, you know, you're only as good as your weakest link, and so surround yourself with people who help you uh, become stronger and just recognize those things within yourself that you uh, that you need to get stronger at and surround yourself with those people. It's, it's an amazing way to run a business and um, certainly to have a career that way. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye bye. I just love Candy, Sonia. She is the best. I'm so excited that she was on the show. And now I'm excited to transition into our spotlight segment of the show. Um, and since January is National Mentor Month, I wanted to highlight an organization called Big Brothers Big Sisters, which is an organization that Ulta Beauty already works closely with. Have you heard of them before? No, I haven't actually, um, but this is exciting. Tell me a little bit more. Um, yeah, so Big Brothers Big Sisters, it's very cute. They match up um, mentors or bigs and children or littles and they pair them together to help you know build their confidence achieve higher aspirations educational success and build better relationships um, and I actually am very very proud because we've been part of this organization and been working with big brothers and big sisters for such a long time but recently two of our very own Nicole Dove and Stacy Ann Houston uh, recently just participated in a virtual girls night in um, where they taught these littles, these little girls, hair and makeup tips and tricks that they can use um, just to partner with Big Brothers Big Sisters in just a small way. How cool is that? Wow, that's fantastic. That's good on them. You know what, so that's fun. where it starts. You know, really encouraging youngsters to be the next level. Well done. Well done. Exactly. So if you're interested, Sonia, um, or if any of you guys watching are interested, to learn more about Big Brothers Big Sisters, you can go to their website. Um, we will go ahead and post it in the comments, and you can see how you can get involved at your local agency. So, Sonia, what an episode, right? What a great episode. We had uh, Candy involved. We have this great organization involved. How are you feeling? Absolutely wonderful. No, really incredible. And um, Ammon, I have to say, what an honor to be in the presence of such great human beings. And um, I know we're going to be going live on my Instagram tomorrow account tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central to recap tonight's episode and, of course, to announce that special, special winner that's going to win these wonderful Weller products. That's right. A little giveaway action. So make sure you guys tune in and hang out with Sonia and I tomorrow night. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at unveilingbeauty.show and the Ulta Beauty YouTube channel, where you can see this episode and many more that we have done. Until then, we will see you guys tomorrow night. Bye.